Every Bridge Burning is the fourth full-length album from Oxnard, California, born death grind, grindcore, power violence, and hardcore punk influenced band Nails. And they've undergone quite a lot of change for this record in terms of the lineup. This is much more of a, a collection of friends that are capable and can follow uh, Todd Jones' vision. A lot of the original members or key members from past releases have kind of left and what we get here is a very familiar production from the, the team that, that typically produces their records. And we get a little bit of a new sound that is focused on uh, Jones's own evolution as a guitarist and different interests and in sounds that aren't going to flatly repeat themselves for just another record. I think going through the history of this band is is pretty important here because knowing that this came from a, a like a hardcore punk fan who was interested in metal and, and kind of pulled that out through power violence, it's a pretty cool story it's cool to see the way that each of those records kind of faced a progression and for me unsilent death is kind of the awesome one i think abandon all life is the best one overall that it was really a record for its time and one that was very memorable as a fan of both uh, hardcore punk and metal and the possibilities shared between the two things i think that's the thing to say about nails in general is that if you're a fan of the maniac side of grindcore and you're a fan of hardcore punk in the 80s and 90s sense there's a lot to like about the way that he uh, that they generally approach each of their records um, and I think You Will Never Be One of Us was sort of their their biggest success. It was kind of the biggest record they put out. It was the one everyone kind of was memeing about at the time. People were really, really paying attention to Nails at that point. And uh, at, at some point, I think the, he, the Todd Jones, the main guy behind the band, lost interest in terms of just didn't know what to do next, wasn't picking up the guitar and playing, and decided just to do other things uh, for several years before reforming the band and putting together this record. So what are the results of this? This very long hiatus in terms of a popular band uh, just kind of checking out. Uh, we'll get to a song here and uh, talk about what's different about this record, what's the same. So of course, a band like this has to function in a, like a working relationship between a drummer and a guitarist. They're so tightly wound. That's the way hardcore punk and grindcore have always worked, except for the really crazed ass, fucked up bands. And I think Carlos Cruz as a drummer works because of the amount of precision and uh, uh, consistency that he brings to his drum work and, and everything he's done from early Hexen to Warbringer and whatnot. Uh, more of a thrash metal drummer overall, but he's got other projects that expand into other uh, venues and bringing in guitarist Shelby Lermo to add to the album and to the songwriting seems to have gone in many different directions where I think eventually Jones's songwriting was free to touch upon things like speed metal there's a kind of you heard the motorhead influences on that that main single and you realize this is a very different record than what we what you might have expected after the I don't want to know you record uh, back in 2019 and for me, yes, this sounds like a Nails record, and that's as much as I wanted. Uh, I think it's cool to see them back. I think it's a great sounding record overall. But as much as I could build this up, and as much as I like this record, and I think this band is cool, putting a big Boss HM2 tone all over this thing is the most boring choice I could have thought of. And that, that's my main criticism, is the guitar sound is so boring to me. And I, I get that's not... What, how everyone will, will react. I think that if you're a fan of Zibalba and bands like that, they have that same tone. It's big, it's huge, and they do cool things with it. But for Nails, this is a band that where precision and frantic energy is everything they have. And that HM2 tone is just, it flattens it to such a boring level that all of it becomes mush. And it doesn't matter how good it sounds. It doesn't matter how perfect the production is. It's very good. It just kind of becomes mush in the hands of that, that particular guitar sound. And uh, for me, that's going to be a breaking point. I mean, they do, they cut into some, like I said, some speed metal influences. Uh, they're not exactly going like black thrash with it or anything, but there are some cool moments on here that showcase interest in things other than what they've done before. Now, does it all land? I don't know if it lands as well as just the cut and dry songs. This does sound a lot like the last album with a different guitar tone overall. 
but it's really short, it's really straight to the point, and it's really just about the energy that it gives you when you listen to it. And in that sense, a 20-minute record for Nails is perfect. They've always done really great work in a short amount of time, and I think it's it's uh, conducive to their interest in hardcore punk, where you're going to get records that are 15 minutes even. And uh, for a metal fan looking for a lot of energy, that's what this record gives you. I don't really have any deep thoughts about it because it, it, I shouldn't take longer to talk about it than it, than it takes to, to, to play it. This band, or this whole idea, hasn't forgotten what it is. They put a lot more into it. They've put a lot of different ideas into it as much as they could. But the same general efficacy of Nails is still there. I might not like the guitar tone, but it's still a fun record to listen to, and I was cer I was certainly entertained. Is it memorable? No, not really memorable, and I, I don't think this is going to be all that high on my best of list for August. I think it's just, it's a good record, it's an awesome Nails record, and I've really loved a lot of their stuff in the past. I don't know if this is exciting enough to really uh, give such a big, huge shout out to, but it's still awesome what they're doing. The energy is there, and some of these new ideas really do work, so... I like that about it, but it's not that exciting to me. See what you think. Check it out for yourself. It releases on August 30th, and read my review for more of my thoughts. I'm on fire, I'm